Welcome to Beat Diabetes, where we discuss ways and means to drive that monster out of your life. On today's edition, we'll hear from a man who had an incredible drop in his A1C from outrageously high to very close to normal. And he sums up his experience by saying, your videos made me believe. Here's a man who says, glad you mentioned triglycerides. Lately, my A1C has stabilized in the fives. He says, my total cholesterol has remained about the same, a bit on the high side, but my triglycerides have reduced from 231 to 84, major reduction in triglycerides. He says, I think when people worry about cholesterol levels on a low-carb, high-fat diet, they need to look past the simple total number and dig deeper. And I couldn't agree more with that statement. Go past that total number and dig deeper. My cholesterol, he says, may be the same quantitatively, but qualitatively it has changed considerably, including increased HDL, went from 40 to 52, which is a good thing, decreased remnant, 47 to 17. So a quick look would say nothing has changed. But looking closer, things have vastly improved. Yes, 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 things have improved. And, uh, you know, some people will ask, what's your cholesterol? And apparently they're meaning your total cholesterol. And if they ask that question... It means their thinking is coming straight from the 1980s. If anyone ever says, what's your cholesterol? And they don't want you to dig a little deeper in. They don't want to talk about the whole picture and the ratios and the triglycerides that are involved and all of that. Uh, they're living from the 70s and 80s. They're not in 2021 because we have learned so much more about cholesterol. And there's just all kinds of ideas and understandings and insights and research that's been done to show that uh, we were very much wrong back in the day when they say, what's your total cholesterol? In fact, I'll go you one further. Even when people would say, well, what's your LDL? LDL is the lousy cholesterol. But even that's not the whole story by any means. And, uh, you know, for some people who say, well, you know, I'd like to go keto and get my glucose down because it's outrageously high, but right now I'm worried about cholesterol. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. If you were getting beat to death by a bully, would you be worried about cholesterol as he's punching you and kicking you and you are about to die from this terrible beating that's going on and you're worried about cholesterol? First, overcome the bully or run away from the bully, get away from the bully, whatever you have to do. But it's not time when you're in a fight for your life to worry too much about cholesterol. Now, after you've gotten away from the bully and the bully is gone, you can sit there in peace and quiet and think about it. Then maybe you need to make some changes. I'm not an expert on cholesterol, but from the people I respect and read, uh, the total cholesterol is not the whole story. Even the LDL is not the whole story. Uh, it's a lot more complicated. Uh, Ivor Cummins writes a lot of great things about cholesterol, and you might want to check some of his books. Uh, Dr. Bernstein says, don't worry about cholesterol. He says your inflammation markers are much more serious and a much more a great indicator of possible heart problems in days to come than your cholesterol. Uh, so uh, there is a lot more to the story, my friend. But anyway, if you're getting beat up, if you've got an A1C of 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, and you're worried about cholesterol, <laughs> well, I would say get that number down into a reasonable level where that sugar's not killing you every day. And then you do some research about cholesterol and decide which way you want to go with all that. One thing is for sure, diabetics have heart attacks. Now, we know that. And there's something about running your glucose high every day. You know, I'm talking about when it's 170, 180, 200, 250, 300, whatever, any, you know, above the norms. When you're running high glucose every day, which also signifies almost certainly uh, you're running high insulin, unless you're a type 1, then uh, you are a candidate for a major heart attack. Uh, sooner rather than later, most likely. So 
uh, get those numbers down, get the, uh, get the uh, insulin down, get the glucose down, and do your research, read some good books, think it through, and uh, plan your strategy. Okay, here is an individual, and this person has an interesting name. I normally don't read names, so I won't call their name out. I'm not even sure if it's a man or a woman because the name is so unusual. In fact, when I, when I read the comment and I saw the unusual name, I clicked on their YouTube channel profile just to see what I could determine about you know who this is. And uh, there was, I think, one Ethiopian video that popped up on their channel. So most likely this is from an Ethiopian, which delighted me greatly. I, I love to, to hear from people from all over the world and to know that this channel is reaching people everywhere, including North Africa, uh, Mid-Africa, South Africa, Asia, Australia, and so forth. Anyway, probably an Ethiopian says this, I tried to follow your advice, and I'm glad I did because my A1C dropped from 15, over 15, down to 6 in just three months. If this was the only guy I mentioned, <laughs> you know, that would be miraculous enough, but I could just share these stories all day long from similar with similar numbers. 15 down to 6 in around three months. He says, I'm sure I'm on the path to completely beat diabetes and be off meds. So apparently he's still taking some meds by fasting and eating a low-carb diet. I have no words to express my gratitude. Your videos gave me hope from the start and made me believe. I love that. I love the testimony. And I love what he said. Your videos gave me hope and they made me believe. Believe what? that I could beat this thing. And if there's one message I want to share with everybody, and especially those who just heard in the last week, last month or so, and you're scared and you're not sure which direction to go, I want to share, you. there's hope for you, my friend. And you need, like this fella did, or this lady, whichever is the case, to believe. Believing leads to action. You know, if you, uh, we Christians, we make a big deal about believing because when you really believe, you'll act on that belief. If you say you believe, but you don't act on it, you don't really believe at all. There's a difference between a mental acknowledgement of something versus the kind of belief that grips you and grabs you and changes you and, and causes you to take action. Uh, an example would be, let's, let's suppose there's two people that are chain smokers, just smoke all the time. And they read an article about smoking and how dangerous it is, how bad it is for you, how it can lead to cancer and all cause you all kinds of problems, lead to heart problems. They both read the exact same article. And after reading it, neither one suggests that he doesn't believe. They both, in one sense, believe. But one puts down the article and throws away his, throws away his cigarettes and says, I'll never smoke another cigarette the rest of my life. And the other one says, yeah, I guess that's probably true. He puts down his article and lights up a cigarette. Well, in one sense, they both believe. That is, if you interviewed them and said, well, did you believe that article? They'd probably both say, yeah, I believe it. But one's belief went beyond his head, got into his heart, and changed his life. And he just quit smoking. And the other one's belief just stayed right at the mental level. It never gripped him. It never grabbed him. It never changed him. This person says, I watched your videos and they gave me hope and they made me believe. And as a result, he went from uh, an A1C of 15 down to six in three months. Well, if he didn't believe before then, I'm sure he would believe at that point, but he believed before. So my question to you is, how about you? Do you believe that by slashing the carbs, you can affect your A1C? You can affect your daily glucose levels? Uh, hopefully you will believe. And he said by watching your video, you know, to me, that's a great miracle almost. He watches some of my videos 
And where he didn't believe and didn't understand, didn't know what to do before, now he knows, now he understands, now he believes. In fact, he believes so much, he puts it into practice, and lo and behold, the numbers come down, and he sees the victory. And uh, he's just uh, so grateful. So a believing that leads to action. And, you know, once you see those numbers on your glucose meter and you get that number from your A1C test, well, (laughs) if you didn't believe before, you will certainly believe at that point. All right, here's another individual who says, thank you, Dennis. I've read your materials and apparently he watched my videos. He says, for the last one year and experienced dramatic results, may God bless you. I've been a diabetic since 2011, and I'm now a healthy man. I love that. He's been a diabetic since 2011, struggling, seeing things go up, go down, gain a little, lose a little, no real success at all for eight years. And then he starts watching these videos, and probably a few others as well, because I'm not the only guy saying this by any means. And then he sees the victory. Results. Boom. It happens. You know, the first approach that this man probably tried, I'm I'm only guessing, but I know it's true for many, is they're a diabetic. The doctor will say, lose some weight, take your meds. Lose weight, take some meds. But that doesn't really fix anything. Number one, most people cannot lose weight just by being told to lose weight. (laughs) Takes more than that. Takes a changed diet. And then the meds can help in a temporary situation, but they don't fix it by any means. And typically, you'll get worse. And then there are some that take the approach, all right, I'm going to go a step further. You know, Doc says lose weight, take meds. I'll lose weight, take meds. But... I'm going to go from eating white bread to eating whole wheat bread. I'm going to go from white rice to brown rice. And uh, in fact, I may even have quinoa sometimes. And I'm going to really change my diet. In fact, I'm going to go from eating a lot of that fatty meat to eating the leanest, scrawniest, toughest meat I can find, some old dried uh, meat from a grandpa chicken. And that's going to fix me right up. I'll eat the leanest possible meat. Or some say I'll just not not eat meat at all. So they go from the white bread to the brown bread, the white rice to the brown rice, throw in a little quinoa, uh, eat that scrawny, tough grandpa chicken all the time instead of the nice, juicy steak and hamburger and uh, salmon, and uh, just cut their fat way down. And lo and behold, they don't see any results. They or they they don't see much results. They wear their badge proudly. You know, I eat whole grain, and they look at someone maybe at a restaurant who's eating white bread, and they feel so superior. And huh, look at him; he eats white bread. He's not one of the elites, not one of the enlightened ones like me. Uh, excuse me, give me a second uh, piece of whole grain bread, please. And while you're at it, bring me some nice brown rice. Well, that may make you feel great and feel superior to others that don't do that. But if you want to lick diabetes, you're going to have to go further than that, my friend. I mean, that's been tried and has been found wanting again and again and again and again. If that's all it took, believe me, there'd hardly be any diabetics left because that's something almost all the nutritionists and all the doctors will push if they have any, you know, if they if they know much about the old school way of doing things. But it just doesn't work. You've got to get those carbs down, and your diabetic body doesn't much care whether you're eating white rice or brown rice, whether you're eating white bread or brown bri- brown bread. Uh, it's still going to raise your glucose tremendously. So you know there are a lot of uh, food snobs in the nutrition business. They love to feel the superiority of uh, eating the whole grain bread eating the lean meat, uh, and that, that can work beautifully if you're not diabetic. You know, that can be fine. But if you're diabetic and you've got an A1C of 12 and you think you can fix that by going from white bread to brown bread and from fatty meat to lean meat, uh, you're just kidding yourself. You're living in a fantasy world. 
You've got to do more than that. You've got to slash those carbs and you've got to get over your fear of fat. And that's a whole nother story. Okay, well, that is it for now. Hope you enjoyed this. If so, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing so that YouTube will notify you when we post new videos. God bless. See you again soon.